Hey friends, Greg here at the Pennywise Guys. I built another solar structure with a dual purpose. Other than solar, my customer uses it for a RV cover. Let me show you how I built it. Let's get started. This is the back view of the structure. It's very tall. They had a real tall trailer, so we made this thing about 12 and a half feet at the middle there where the AC uh, on the unit will pass through very easily. Next to their shop, it's about the same height as the shop, so it's good to have the height so we get the sun a little earlier than the or early morning hours. Let me show you some details. Each uh, post is sunk in concrete. I have concrete pedestals to keep the erosion away from the posts. We've got a fire extinguisher and our inverter. Okay, so we have three posts on each side. Let me show you some details here. I'll climb up on the ladder. The system works very well. And there's just a little bit of sun there, just it peeking through at 10 o'clock in the morning. But for the most part, the trailer is protected. I went ahead and put some solar screen on this side, stretched it with aviation cable across the bottom and the top and the sides stretched it nice and tight with turnbuckles and then zip tied. All right, let me show you some details up above here. As I've talked to you before in other projects, I have what's called a sea purlin. It has a two and a half inch flange on top, eight inches down, two and a half inch flange on the bottom with half inch returns. The returns give us the ability to uh, protect the wires inside the trough there and that trough from that return creates a natural gutter system for water to be diverted down the line. Okay, so got a tractor going by here and a dog barking, so we'll continue. In the middle here, we have, we call it Z purlins. It's shaped like a Z. It's two and a half inches at the top with a return, down eight inches, and out this way, two and a half inches with a return. The return, again, the wiring tucks up in there real nicely. It's waterproof wiring. The connectors are clipped on top of the retur uh, that return, that little channel there. So the water that flows down is going underneath the uh, actual connector. So the connector does not get wet. Okay. And same thing here on the Z Perlin. And then the, another C Perlin. Okay, the Z Perlins we share between two panels from this side and this side. On top of that, two and a half inch, I have a three eighths inch gap with a quarter inch stainless steel tech screw with a washer and a star uh, washer underneath that bites into the uh, aluminum panel to give it a natural bonding. They call it a weeb or a bonding washer, but I use a, the star washers to get that bonding, okay? And everything's grounded. We got a grounding rod on each of these projects down at the base of one of the posts. We have uh, copper wire that connects everything together. So the whole system is bonded down to the grounding rod. Okay, let me show you. Uh, I add two and a half, or actually, yeah, that's two and a half by two and a half inch roofing trim, you know, V trim. And I attach it with flat three inch uh, little bars there, those little uh, straps with a quarter inch hole into the panel I drill. I put a piece of plywood above that when I'm drilling so you don't drill into the panel. You don't want to do that. Drill that hole, put that little quarter inch bolt there, bend that bracket just enough to put pressure on the trim that pushes it up against the, um, I don't know if you can see them, right there behind that V-trim, you see it sticking out the end of the tech screw that comes through and holds the panel down. The V-trim pushes up against that threads of that tech screw and then that flat uh, bar holds it tight against that and it doesn't drop down. It stays up very nicely. So I have a, 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 a gutter system there and I got a gutter system there and on the C purlins they don't need that because whatever water leaks through it's usually on the outside on the downside which you don't need it. Water will not leak on the inside. But on the upside, when it drips down, it catches into that uh, C, C purlin and goes down the line. Where there's a butted joint for the, um, the uh, purlins, I silicone that seam 
bottom and up the sides on the on the on the uh, butt joints there to seal those so they don't drip through and so everything is pretty drip proof so you have sun protection and rain protection on your RV okay let me show you the top but I'll show you how we did the connections there and then I'll uh, I don't think we need to show you anything else I don't know if you've seen the uh, the posts the 5x5 posts I'd make a, a welded 3 8 plate on the top of that with a quarter inch arms that come up that bolt through with half inch bolts through the little cradle plate there and the 4x10 beam so that's why we make the connections on those so that works out really clean and nice it's in, all engineered uh, done very well let me show you a few more details on electrical and then we'll get on top to look at the connections and what I do is I run all the uh, DC cable through two inch PVC pipe with the elbow and then can come down to the inverter and then go in the back of the inverter with the PVC pipe. That protects it well. Um, it doesn't have to have the, because it's DC wires that are made for outside, but it just nicely dresses them up, gives them some protection from getting snagged and pulled. And then, the, of course, the AC line on this one comes off the AC disconnect which we need because the panel is at the house, this is at the shop, there's no panel to do a breaker disconnect. So then that just goes in the ground, we dug a trench all the way around the property and to the house, okay? So then we ran the AC lines that way. There's the, the uh, bonding strap that goes a eight foot rod in the ground and that bonds the whole structure for electrical charges like say a lightning strike or anything it just bonds it to the ground and I don't think I can show you any of the copper but I basically oh it's on the middle beam I think you can see it right up there you can see it poking up a little bit right there I stretch it uh, strap it with a tech screw and a bonding clamp to the purlin I'll go across and I tie it to each one of the purlins I don't know if you can see that right there. It's tied, it's tied there and it goes down to the next one, tied and goes that. So they're all tied together that way. And then I put jumpers between the connect, when it's not one continuous piece, I put a little jumper, uh, eighth inch copper wire between the two. And so it's all bonded together and then it goes down to the, down to the ground there. And that's, that's it connected to the post uh, with a tech screw and that post is bonded up there okay and I got lots of birds and this one particularly out in the country there's a dove right there made a nest you see the dove this structure is next to the almond uh, orchards so it gets really really dirty during harvest this area becomes like a fog of dust and so I have a washing system check out my next video on all my washing systems this one has a washing system and I'm going to show you a demonstration after harvest how dirty these panels get and how well that washing system washes these panels off so check out my videos on the washing systems you'd be amazed simply done you can build them I've got them for rooftop systems different types of roofs tile comp and then of course my metal structure all right let me show you uh, I've got the washing system turned on check out my video for the washing system You'll notice the water drips off the end here where they're coming out of the uh, C purlin down there and out of the Z purlin, out of the Z purlin, and out of the C's over there. Okay, and this has got a lot of water being put on there. And you notice there's no water inside the structure coming out. It's coming off the perimeter on the low end and it's channeled to this end, it sloped to the, the south enough to have the water run down the Z purlins and the C purlins and the gutter system that I showed you. And see if it's cut, see, coming out of the gutter system there and running out. Okay, it works really well. Check out my video for the washing system. You'll see how that works. Okay, I'm on top here. 
You can see how dirty these panels are. This is the middle of July. They haven't been washed since the spring. And so I'm gonna wash them off today and I'm gonna show you how that works. And uh, you'll see how the dirt flows off. But in the fall, about the end of September, these panels are such a layer of dirt, you can't even see the black panel. It, it's so thick of dirt. And you'll see that when I do the videos on the washing system. On this one, I'll show you the cleaning. Let me show you the clamping on this one. Okay, here's that quarter inch stainless steel uh, tech screw. A washer with that star washer. If you can see that or not, there you go. That star washer bites into the aluminum on the frame of the panel and bonds it. See how straight this row is? Okay, it's really important on a shared row system that sharing a two and a half inch wide purlin to have this system perfectly square. In order to do that, I take diagonals across, if you're no construction, a diagonal measurement from that corner to the opposite corner, and then that corner to this corner. Those diagonals have to be within a quarter inch of accuracy. So when we're setting this up to, um, to build, we square this thing off almost perfectly. There's some diagonals we have perfect, some with about a quarter inch. I don't like more than quarter inch. That way, you can get those panels down perfectly. Otherwise, if you don't have it square, and then these panels start to go drift off the rails, and, it, and you have to stagger them to make adjustments. You don't want to do that. Okay, it's very important to take the time to square off and level everything. And then you got a perfectly aligned system, and a shared rail system then works. We do a dual rail or, or a two rail system for each panel. And with that three quarter inch gap in between, you don't have to worry about that because you have that much um, ability to adjust the panels to make it fit. And so you're not worried about it. But in a shared rail system, you have to have it squared off. Okay, let's go ahead and um, if I'm done showing you everything here, but I'm gonna go ahead, check out my video on the washing system. I'm gonna look at the washing system now and we're gonna run this to show you how well it cleans dirty panels like that. When I come back in the fall, they're going to be tremendously dirty. And we're going to wash it again with uh, and show you how it works. All right, check those out. I have other videos on, on all kinds of different structures. Check them all out. You'll get some good ideas. All right. You guys have a blessed day. I sure hope you enjoyed this video and it was a help to you. Please like, subscribe, and share. Also, hit that notification bell to be notified of weekly videos. I pray that you are blessed and that you know him who is the author of life.